Assalamu alaikum dear viewers. My name is Amir Imtiaz and I am working as a physics teacher at Shah Sufi Memorial Balkan Educational Trust, Sopur. In this video, we are going to discuss the unit second of class 9 physics, that is force and laws of motion. Before taking off, I would request you to kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for notifications of the upcoming videos. Alright, let's take off. In our daily life, we come across a number of situations where we observe actions are executed or work is done by the involvement of an external agency in the form of push or pull. That push or pull is called as force. Okay. So force is an external agent in the form of push or pull, which can do three different types of activities. Force is something that we cannot see by our eyes. But we can feel it, we can judge it by its effects, by the effects it produces. So what are the effects that force can produce? For example, if I tell you, there's a body that's at rest, all right, and I'm applying force on it. Suppose there's a wooden block lying on the surface of earth, all right. We all know that this wooden block has got mass m and its weight is w, is equal to mg. We have already discussed these things in unit first. What is mass? What is weight? Weight is the force with which a body is attracted towards earth. And we know that everywhere in this universe a force exists that opposes the relative motion. And that force is called as frictional force. Suppose I am applying a force F on this block. Alright. If the body if the force F I'm applying is sufficient enough to overcome the force of friction, then this body of mass M will get into motion. And if the force F I'm applying is not sufficient enough to overcome the force of friction, then this body won't get in motion. Therefore, I would simply say force can bring a body in motion or it will try to bring it in motion. Similarly, suppose if I say there's a body that's moving with some velocity and I'm applying force on it to stop it. The force I am applying may stop it or may not stop it. Therefore, I will simply say that a force can bring a, stop a bo moving body or it will try to stop a moving body. Third, a force can change the direction of motion of a moving body. So how can actually uh, exactly a force change the direction of uh, motion of a moving body? You guys might have watched it, a cricket match or a football match. In cricket match, you observe that a uh, Baller pushes a ball towards the batsman. The batsman with his bat changes the direction of motion of the ball. Similarly, in a football match, when one player kicks the football towards another player. Alright, from now it has moved from one player to another. There, the second player again kicks it and changes the direction. So in all these cases, the external agency in the form of push or pull, in first case tries to move a body or moves it, reduces motion in it. Second, tries to stop a moving body or uh, stops it. Third, in third case, tries to change the direction of motion of a moving body or change the direction of motion of a moving body. So in real life, we observe this thing, force, in almost all of the examples. For example, you have to ride a bicycle. You apply force by your feet on the paddles of the bicycle and thereby you are able to move it. Similarly, you have to lift water from a well using a rope and a wheel, all right? In that case, again, you are applying a pulling force. So in almost, suppose you have to uh, insert a nail in a concrete wall or in a wooden block, again, you are applying force. So in all these cases, an external agent in the form of push or pull is involved. That's called as force. One thing you should remember here is the SI unit, standard international unit. We have talked about SI units in unit first of force is Newton, denoted by the symbol capital N. And if you are writing it in abbreviation, then you have to write it N-E-W-G-O-N, Newton. Now, the second thing we are going to discuss about is balanced and unbalanced forces. You guys might have observed a game or watched it or even played during the school days or um, during uh, at home also that the name of the game is tug of war. In this game, there are certain players on one side. For example, I will name this team as team B. Okay. And there's another one team that's team Q. Okay. 
there are three persons, namely A, B, and C. There are another three persons, D, E, and F, on team Q. They are pulling a rope in this game. For example, team P is able to pull the rope by a force of 50 Newton. And team Q is also able to apply the force of 50 Newton. In this case, this rope would not shift in any direction because the net sum of all the forces acting on the rope is zero. One thing you have to take care of here is convention. Convention is basically a rule that we have to follow for a particular operation. All right. Suppose if you uh, if you are studying optics, you have to follow certain sign conventions to calculate object distance, image distance, etc. Uh, you will be studying this thing in class ten. Okay. As of now, remember convention is a rule that you have to follow for a particular operation. In this case, if I am taking the force in this direction, suppose x-axis, along the positive direction of x-axis, this is origin, this is x-axis, and suppose this is my y-axis. In the positive direction of x-axis, I am taking the forces as positive, all right? Then this will, this will be plus 50 Newton. And the forces I am taking in the negative direction, all right, of this x-axis as negative. Then the total sum of force in this case will be zero. Therefore, I will say in case of balanced forces, the summation of all forces acting on a body is zero. You should not confuse with this thing. This is simply this is simply representing that there are number of forces involved. That is F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus dash 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 Fn, while n is any integer. There are number of forces involved, and I can simply represent this thing with this notation. Summation of Fi, where F is I is running from 1 to n is equal to 0 in case of balanced forces. In contrast to this. If I am saying that the in the same game tug of war, the team P is able to exert a pull of 150 Newton, while as team B is still exerting a force of 50 Newton. In this case, the team A team P will be declared as winner because there is the net sum of force. Uh, there is some uh, resultant force acting, and that resultant force is in favor of team P, and therefore in this case. Summation of all forces F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus dash 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 Fn is not equal to zero. Or I can simply write summation of Fi by I is running from 1 to n is not equal to zero. You should remember one thing here that in order to produce motion in a body, it is necessary that some unbalanced forces should be acting on it. For example, I'll make you understand this thing with a simple example. For example, there's a body of mass m all right it is it is resting on a smooth surface it's resting on the surface of earth for example it is weight at this downwards all right we all know that whenever an object rests on a particular um, plan it it is being acted upon by the force on the planet which it rests that's called normal reaction by the newton's third law of motion we will be discussing this in the later part of this unit weight acts downwards and the surface of earth on which it is resting or the surface of a plan on which it is resting exerts a force reactive force that's called normal reaction these two balance each other hence it is in a state of rest now if i say i am applying a force of f is equal to 10 newton on this side only then it will be a, i will be able to produce motion if this force is sufficient enough to overcome the force of friction if I suppose on the other side again a 10 Newton force is applied, in this case the body won't move because there are balanced forces acting on it. Normal reaction will cancel out with weight, these 10 Newtons will cancel out with these 10 Newtons, therefore the body won't be able to move. So in simple terms, it is necessary to have unbalanced forces acting on a body to produce motion in it. All right. The next thing we are going to discuss is inertia. <coughs> Inertia. I'll make you understand the concept of inertia with simple examples. You guys might have observed this thing while traveling in a bus. Suppose the bus is moving with a speed of 20 or 30 or 40 km per hour. If the driver of the bus suddenly applies brakes, for example, to avoid any untoward uh, happening, we at once our body shifts forward. This is happening due to the property of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of a body to resist a change, to oppose a change in its state of rest or of uniform motion. 
anybody that is in a state of rest wants to continue that state of rest all right that tendency is referred to as inertia or anybody in this universe that is in a state of motion uniform motion wants to continue in that state and that uh, property of that body is referred to as inertia now inertia is of three types inertia of rest inertia of motion and inertia of direction what does inertia of rest mean the tendency of a body to oppose or to resist a change in its state of rest for example you are in a bus all right you are waiting for the bus to take off Uh, the journey and to reach a particular destination for example you are sitting in the bus and the driver of the bus suddenly starts the bus and starts moving your body at once moves backwards this is happening because of the inertia of rest i can give you more examples of inertia of rest which you can realize in daily life for example you might have also when we take when we take out the carpets of our room all right you know the matting uh, in and put it in sunlight for 3 to 4 hours and then we hit with a hit we hit it with a stick we also that the dust particles that are adhered to the surface of that uh, particular carpet come out again this is happening because of the inertia of rest the dust initially the dust particles and the carpet both are in a state of rest now i have tried to bring the carpet in motion but the dust particles will resist it therefore they come out because of the property of inertia next thing while you can realize the phenomena of inertia is you might have observed this thing in the month of october if you visit a garden for example an uh, apple garden you will observe that if you shake the branch of an apple tree you will see that the leaves and apple will fall down but the branch will stay there what happens initially both the leaves the uh, fruits and the branch are all, all, all are in a state of rest the moment you start shaking the branch now the branch has got into motion and the fruits and the leaves which are loosely attached to the branch will come to will resist that change they don't want to uh, get into motion therefore they fall down all this is happening because of inertia of rest now the second thing inertia of motion as we already discussed it, like the like example of a bus moving bus all right uh, now inertia of direction this is again an important topic you might have also this thing for example while traveling on a curved road suppose there is a road on which there is a curve like if you guys have uh, visited the famous place gulmarg or if you have visited jammu from kashmir via road then you might have also this thing on curves whether they are blind curves or whether you are able to see the opposite end the moment we take a right or a left hand curve we are shifted in a direction opposite to that in which the car is taking turn this is happening because of the inertia of direction one more thing i would like to add here is that you might have also this thing the roads the outrise of the roads at the curves are raised a bit this is called this phenomenon is called banking of roads this is related to the stability of cars in order to prevent accidents this thing is done and you are going to study this in class 11th physics as of now just remember inertia is the property of a body the tendency of a body due to which it resists a change in its state of rest or of uniform motion all right the next topic we are going to study is the newton's laws of motion